peace be with you. That's the phrase from the Gospels that the church around the world is sharing on this Sunday as we remember the resurrection appearances of Jesus. Here at Pomacea Presbyterian, we'll be continuing to provide our worship services online through the end of May at least, and likely even further as we have gotten such affirmation for people being able to access the worship services this way. I thank you for joining us in worship. I thank you also for your generosity that continues to support the ministry of the church and the compassionate outreach of the church. I especially want to thank you not only for the gifts you've made to the church's operating budget and the COVID relief fund, both of which are significantly a part of our reaching out to the community, but also for the groceries that you've been bringing in to the fellowship hall. The groceries we're now sending particularly to end 68 hours of hunger as that ministry to children who are nutritionally challenged in this community, in schools even near the church, is a critical ministry at this time. So I hope you'll continue to support that with the faithfulness that you've brought to bear across this season. I thank the Lord that the resurrected Christ is amongst us. I certainly have experienced his presence and in a large way through your presence in this season. Today, let us worship God together.
must be called to worship. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Peace be with you. Jesus stands among us. Peace be with you. The risen Lord is here. Let us pray together. O Christ, after your resurrection, you appeared to your disciples. You breathed on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You gave joy and exaltation to that whole creation. Through your victory, we pray to you. Hear us, Lord of glory, and pour out your Spirit on your church on this your day, that in our praise, in our prayers, in our fellowship, in our worship, we might witness to the presence of the risen Christ amongst us still. In his name we pray, amen. church gathers for worship, it always gathers through confession. It's a sign of our common need for the mercy made known to us in Jesus Christ. Let us pray together. Wondrous God, you have broken the power of sin and death, and by your great mercy you have given us new birth into a living hope. Yet the seeds of doubt grow quickly, fear chokes off confidence, and prevents us from receiving your spirit. O oh God, in your mercy, give to us the peace that passes understanding. Forgive us and draw us close to you, that we may breathe deeply of your presence and find in you the fullness of joy. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. God loves the world and has made this love known to us in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. In worship we gather around the reading of God's word. The first reading for today comes from the first letter to Peter, chapter 1, reading verses 3 through 9. We proceed the reading with prayer. O oh God, you have given us Jesus as the light of the world, and at the beginning of your creation you said, let there be light, and in his resurrection his light is seen as victorious. Now through his Spirit, illumine our hearts and minds 
that in the reading and hearing and reflecting on your word, we might have that light guiding our way again. In the name of the resurrected Jesus, we pray. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, thank you for being in worship today. You make church a better place by your participation. Today in worship, we're gonna hear a gospel story from the Gospel of John. It's a story that the church around the world hears every Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. But the story doesn't take place the Sunday after Easter. The story takes place on the first day of the week. So it takes place right after the women have gone and seen that Christ is no longer in the tomb. I wonder, what do you imagine that would have been like? Do you imagine that the disciples would be gathered together, celebrating, shouting for joy? That's a part of our Easter celebration, isn't it? Shouting alleluias, gathering together with friends and with families to celebrate. Well, this story tells us that the disciples were in an upper room and in a room that was locked. They were hiding because they were afraid you may know something about hiding. You may know something about being afraid. I wonder if the disciples, having heard from the women that Jesus was no longer in the tomb but was raised from the dead, I wonder if perhaps they were hiding because they were afraid, fearful, of if they were to see the risen Christ that perhaps he might be disappointed in them. He might be mad or sad that in his final moments that they weren't present with him in the ways that they thought they were going to be. I wonder if they were afraid of the authorities and the people who took Jesus off and who crucified him. I wonder if they were hiding because they were afraid that because of their connections with Jesus, that that too may be what happened to them. You know, 
when Jesus came to them in that room where they were locked, where they were hiding together in fear, Jesus wasn't mad at them. He wasn't ashamed of them. He didn't yell and holler at them and say, where were you? Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Friends, no matter how mad or sad or afraid you might be in any given moment in life, no matter the mistakes that you might make, know that Jesus comes and stands beside you and says, peace be with you. This is a wonderful story to hear in a hiding place. And so I want to encourage you that after worship today, at some point, Find some time to find a hiding place with your family. Gather together with your family Bible or with a story Bible and read this text in your hiding place from the Gospel of John. And then talk with one another. Share with one another. Extend the peace of Christ with one another. And share the ways that you have seen Christ's peace. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that you do not leave us alone. We thank you that when the risen Christ came and appeared amongst his friends, that he said, peace be with you. Help us to see and to know and to feel that peace. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As a part of our worship today, we are receiving an offering, and that offering is a time certainly for you to reflect on and pray how you might share in Christ's generosity and reaching out to this world. But it's also a time for you to lift up the gifts that you might be able to share in your talent, in your time, in your prayers in the week ahead. I'm so grateful for the faithful way in which so many of you have so intentionally given. It's not only been a great support of the ministry of this church, but has positioned us to reach out in compassion as well. So let us pray together now that the spirit of the generosity of the resurrected Christ might continue to travel with us in the week ahead. Please pray with me. Thank you, Lord, that you give us so generously your spirit. Now as we receive it, we lift up our hearts before you and ask that you would continue to help us to be generous, help us to take the gifts that you have entrusted to us and use them as a means of your blessing others. We pray in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, amen.
Our second reading this morning is the traditional gospel reading for the second Sunday in Eastertide. It comes from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Hear now God's holy word. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, through the gift of your Holy Spirit, quiet within us any voice but your own. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The disciples were locked inside for fear. Every one of us can relate to this story in new ways this year, ways that two months ago, let alone this time last year, were beyond our wildest imaginations. The disciples were locked in a room hiding from the Judeans for fear that they may come after them, just as they had gone after Jesus. Each of us in our own homes for fear of a virus that has ended in the death of so many around the world. Scripture bears witness through this story that the people of God can expect the risen Christ to appear, breaking through locked doors, isolation, chaos, anxiety, fear, and even death. And when he does, his message and his greeting is one of peace. As I was listening to a lectionary podcast called Sermon Brainwave this week, one of the scholars lifted up that Martin Luther, in his 1527 treatise, considering the question of whether one may flee from the Black Plague, wrote, Christ's peace is not to remove us from disaster and death, but to have peace in the midst of disaster and death because Christ has already overcome these things. Friends, Christ has overcome death. And because Christ has overcome and been triumphant over death, we can experience Christ's peace in the midst of the disaster and the death that is present in this world. We can experience Christ's peace in the long hours and anxiety-ridden space of hospitals. We can experience Christ's peace in the deep loneliness while sheltering at home alone. 
And we can experience Christ's peace in every place in between. Know that you have not been abandoned by Christ. Know that we have not been abandoned by Christ in these moments, for Christ's peace is not to remove us from disaster or death, but to give us a peace which surpasses all understanding. This morning's scripture reading ends with the author of John letting the audience know he could have told many more stories. He writes, Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Jesus did many other signs. These are written so that you may come to believe and that through believing, you may have life through him. You too have been borne witness to this fact. I've been looking and listening for the ways that you report in this period of unknowns and fear how the peace of the risen Christ has entered into the space that you are a part of. My faith has been nurtured and encouraged by the stories that you have reported, and so I share with you some of what I've seen and heard from others in our community, that we may encourage one another and continue to provide a witness that Christ's peace breaks into dark and troubled places because Christ has already overcome these things. Carol Wells and her family packed bags this week to be distributed to children as a part of the N68 Hours of Hunger program. Carol said, I had a strong awareness that with each food item I placed in a bag, a child somewhere would be receiving the peace of Christ. Food security offers peace. And behind all of the food in that bag are hundreds of volunteers that donate food and money, source food, make lists, pack bags, deliver bags, and then prepare food for their children from those bags. God has enabled us to provide his peace and so that others might find peace. Sylvia Campbell reports, I find peace in the roots that are slowly emerging on my cuttings in my kitchen window. From the celery and the onions I'm growing, from the bases that I would have previously discarded. From watching the sun continue to rise over the bay shore each morning. These all to me represent the continuation of something much greater than ourselves and the promise for new birth and new growth. I also find peace in the faces of those at the hospital who selflessly each day enter the building, not knowing what the day will hold or how it will end. This also represents to me the promise of tomorrow. Robert Mims, standing in the prayer labyrinth at Bayshore Baptist Church, was looking at the wooden Easter cross that is there and began to reflect how he typically thinks about the small acts that individuals participate in when he thinks about the peace of the risen Christ in our midst. And yet while he was standing there this week, he said it occurred to him that all of those small acts add up to an enormous and a great witness. He encourages us to consider the impact, the big impact, believers have had on the world that the risen Christ has created. Julianne McKeel, in an email from Martha Spickelmeyer, was encouraged, along with a smaller group of friends, to do something that Martha had seen on the internet, suggesting that people gather palm fronds and make a cross and place it on their door so that the larger community on Palm Sunday 
could experience and see the message and come together in a form of unity in this time and space in which we are ordered to stay at home. Julianne said that she was looking around at her neighbor's houses to see who wouldn't mind if she stole some palm fronds from their yard. When she received the church e news, inviting her and others to come for a drive through frond pickup. She says, I went to the church, got the fronds home, and after 30 minutes of figuring out how to make them stay in the shape of a cross, it went up on my door. For some reason, that gave me a great sense of peace, like I was now ready for whatever was to come. PCPC member Marjorie Carlson died last week after an extended chronic illness, which in many ways had her locked inside of herself for many years. Sally Spear, one of Marjorie's good friends, who continued to care for her and walk alongside of her in this chapter of her life, shared that knowing that Marjorie is now free from a burdensome illness has been a sign of Christ's peace for her. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this sermon, but these are written so that your faith may be nurtured and your spirit encouraged, so that in your believing you may have life in his name. In the midst of so much uncertainty, one thing is certain, God is at work. Though the form the new life will take may not yet be clear, God is the one shaping and fashioning creation. God is at work, and God will sustain us to do and be in ways that we could not have previously imagined. The risen Christ is among us, even breaking into the places we may hide in fear, that we may know and believe God's love and care is more powerful than any locked door, more powerful than any virus, more powerful than even death itself. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Let us pray together. O oh God, in your great love, you give us Jesus Christ present amongst us, bringing the gift of your peace. We thank you, Lord, that you have not left us alone, but that he continues to breathe that peace upon us. Lord, we lift up to you this disrupted world. Indeed, the suffering, the exhaustion, the worry that continues to be a part of our journey. Send us your peace once again, Lord. Breathe on us, breath of God. 
that we might receive that gift and in turn might help to share it with others. We ask that you would pour out your healing spirit on all who are sick, on any who struggle with any form of illness. We ask that you would remove from us the plague of this virus, restore the health of communities and nations and this world. We pray particularly for those who are vulnerable, for the poor, for the elderly, for those whose health is already impaired. Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray for caretakers, for those assisting at bedsides, for doctors and nurses and therapists and scientists, for those who administer government and communities now, pour out wisdom, Lord, and a zeal for your justice and unity amongst us. With you, O oh God, all things are possible. Help us now to trust that and enable us in receiving the gift of your spirit to reach out in some way in love for one another. Especially we remember those who have lost their jobs those who lift up their prayers to you for how they will care for their children, those whose cups are empty. O oh Lord, pour out your spirit on them, and strengthen them, guide them, and comfort them. And enable us as a community in this challenge to witness to the presence of the resurrected Christ amongst us, that he might be glorified. We pray as he has taught us to pray as a family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose faith has been declared for centuries by using the Apostles' Creed. Let us now affirm our faith also using this ancient and beloved creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen.